Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Kung Fu Report. Chris, can you please come in? On the last episode, we talked a little bit about how to release grab. And we went against different types of grab, and I was explaining different principles. If you're interested in the context of that, please watch the last episode. I'll get Chris to put it in the description below the link. So it was something like this. Chris grab, and you can release it like this. Or release it like this, it grabs another way. You can release it like this, right? And it doesn't matter how strong he grabs, just because I'm using his force against it. And I got some message people asking, well, how does that relate to Wing Chun? Because I said the titties I was using was not Wing Chun. But Wing Chun has a flip side. Instead of releasing the grab, sometimes on purpose, you don't want the guy to let go. It becomes an asset. For example, when we do a really basic warm-up exercise, and Chris pressure go across, this is common in Wing Chun traffic. Or if he goes right into my face, then I'll go this way. He blocks again. I'll go this way. Right? And they work pretty good. But what happens if Chris just grabs instead of block? All of a sudden, A doesn't work anymore, and B doesn't work anymore. So when, from a Wing Chun perspective, I don't want him to let go. If he doesn't let go, it becomes a trap. So that's the way, one way that Wing Chun look at grab is I don't want to release the grab. I don't even want him to let go at all. Same if I did a lap style, Chris blocks, this trap works good. But as soon as Chris grabs, the trap no longer works. So in that circumstance, I don't want Chris to let go at all. The longer he holds on, the better, because he's trapping himself. He traps himself like this, after I hit him, then I release the grab. So that's another way to look at it from a Wing Chun point of view. Or if he grabs and punches, I don't want him to let go. Because if he doesn't let go, he's actually trapping himself. So that's the idea we think about where if he throws a hook and he grabs my arm, I don't want him to let go. If he doesn't let go, he's actually trapping himself. So these are some of the ideas that do, we do in Wing Chun. When we get back, I'll talk more about it. All right, guys, we're going to work on this on solo, but um, Chris, please come in. I'm going to demonstrate something with Chris that way he can help you um, visualize better. I did a bunch of stuff earlier, and we're going to pick one thing out of it. If Chris blocked with a pack setup, I'm doing a basic warm up lap style exercise. The trap works, but if Chris grabs, the trap doesn't work. So I was saying earlier, Wing Chun has a weird perspective. We don't want to release the grab. In fact, I don't even want him to let go. If he grabs, if he doesn't let go, good. Now he traps himself. So I hit him, too. But after I hit him, I do release the grab. And what I did earlier was, when I grab, don't grab tight, Chris. That's what I did. Now, how does that work? I'll go very slow. It's actually a classical Hun Sao from Silly Dog. All I did earlier was this. After I hit Chris, he lets go. Even when he's grabbing tight, he lets go. But if I just do the Hun Sao like this from Silly Dog, grab tight, Chris, it doesn't work. So what am I actually doing? So now let's work on it in solo. I was actually using a few tricks in my lower body. Instead of just doing the out like this to release the grab like I just did, when you play this, imagine someone's grabbing your hand like Chris was doing, is yanking it this way, when you're going to Tom Da first. Then after that, I did a hun out and I grabbed Chris's arm. I turn him and I continue to hit. So to break that down, when you're doing the Tan out when a guy grab and you're hitting, make sure you just tuck in your elbow like you learn in Silindo, but relax the upper arm. If, you, if he grabs you and you tense up your arm, and he happens to slip off or let go, you end up here. Now your face is wide open. So relax your arm and don't do that. Just tuck in your elbow. Once you do the hun sao part, in order to make it work, if you just use your arm, it won't work. What I did to make it work is I actually went down to this point and pushed down a little bit as I lower my hip. That's what I was doing to Chris earlier. Can you see this, Chris? Right. You notice when I push down with this and go down on my hip, the elbow flares a little bit like this. That's like this part of the energy is going to like this, boom. So I'm pushing myself into the ground. All my weight's going right into his wrist. That's why Chris let go. This is the idea you can work on over and over. There's many arts in Bagua and Xing Yi, but Wing Chun can do it too. When we do a Hun Zhao, we can also lower our hip and push down a bit. This is very similar to the, one of the movements in the third form, in the Buji form, right? So, can you see when I come in here, I can go halfway into the Hun Zhao and then turn it into a Lap Zhao. Hun Zhao, Lap Zhao. So I'm blending two hands, the Lap Zhao and the Hun Zhao together. I Hun and then I Lap. And I link it into my hip as a shift, Jun Ma, 
and sit down a little bit, right? So I turn and turn it into a lapso. That's why I did the cursor over here. It looks like a hunzo, but when I change it into a lapso, it changes the vector, right? So that's something you can play with when you do a solo. Besides that, the other techniques I did today, there's a bunch of stuff to go with it. I don't have time to go over it today. If you're interested in that kind of training, please go to amchangkungfu.com. See you next week.